In this video, I want to start to derive the maximum likelihood estimators for the population mean and population variance. So the idea here is that we have some sort of population. And within that population, there is some sort of population process which generates something which I'm going to call xi. And xi is related to the population mean mu plus some sort of error variance, which I'm going to call here epsilon i. And here I'm defining in the population epsilon i to be normally distributed with a mean of zero and a variance of sigma squared. So the idea here is that in general, we don't actually have the entirety of the population data. We only have a subsample of that particular data. And in general, what we'd like to do in estimation theory in general, as well as in maximum likelihood, is we would like to come up with some estimators for the population parameters mu and sigma squared. And in this video, I'm going to talk about how we can use maximum likelihood to come up with estimators of the population mean mu and the population variance sigma squared. Okay, so how do we go ahead and think about this? Well, first of all, we need to actually define the sort of probability uh, distribution for an individual xi. And we're going to write that as the function of xi, given that, let's say, we knew mu and sigma squared. Okay, so how can we get this? Well, to see this, all we would need to do is if we took this mu over to the other side here, we'd just be left with epsilon i is equal to xi minus mu. And we already know epsilon i's distribution. It's normally distributed with a mean of zero and a variance of sigma squared. So in other words, the likelihood function for xi minus mu is just going to be the typical probability distribution for a standard normal distribution. So it's just going to be 1 over root 2 pi times sigma squared, where I've divided through here by sigma squared in order to standardize it. And then we're just going to have e to the power minus xi minus mu, all squared, divided through by 2 sigma squared. OK, so that's the probability distribution for a given xi. But in general, what we're talking about here is we have a sample of n observations from the population. So we need to define the overall likelihood function for those uh, all those set of n data points. And in order to do that, if we assume that the observations are independent, all we need to do then is we need to multiply the individual likelihood functions together. So now we've got the product from i equals 1 to n of this particular likelihood function, which we just just defined off here. So that's just going to be the product from i equals 1 to n of 1 over 2 pi sigma squared times the exponent of minus xi minus mu all squared divided through by 2 sigma squared. And we can simplify this a bit further if we just sort of notice that this thing here is completely independent of i, so we can just take it outside. And then we're just going to get on the outside 1 over the square root of 2 pi sigma squared all to the power n. And then we're just going to have our original product from i equals 1 to n of the exponent of minus xi minus mu all squared divided through by 2 sigma squared. OK, so that's the likelihood function. But in general, when we are looking for maximum likelihood estimators for the parameters in our model, so that in this case, sigma squared and mu, in general, it is easier to maximize log likelihood because we've seen before when we take the log of a product, it actually becomes a sum. So if I take the log of likelihood, so I'm going to write little l is equal to the log of big L. So we're talking about the log likelihood now. If we do that, then we're going to be taking the log of a product. So we've got this thing times something else. And because of the fact that we know from our log rules that the log of a times b is equal to the log of a plus the log of b, we can just write this whole thing as it's going to be equal to n times uh, what we're going to have here. We're going to have n times 1 over the square root of 2 pi sigma squared. And then we're going to have this product term, which is going to become a sum when we actually uh, take the log of it. So it's going to be minus 1 over 
2 sigma squared times the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi minus mu all squared. Where note that because of the fact I've used the, the natural log, the log of, or the natural log, which I'm going to write here just as log of e to the power x is just equal to x. So that's why we've now sort of dispensed with this e term here. And similarly from our log rules, we know that the log of a to the power b is just equal to b times log of a. So that's why I was able to bring this n down in front here when we actually took the log of it. And note finally that I've taken out a factor of 1 over 2 sigma squared just because I can. It doesn't depend on i itself, so I can actually take that outside of the summation. Okay, so we're nearly in a stage now where we can sort of go ahead and differentiate it. But I can simplify this a bit further. So if we actually write this thing inside the parenthesis here slightly differently, and I've just noticed that this thing inside the parenthesis here should actually have a log in front of it. So we're going to have n times the log of this whole thing. Because I've just realised that I've completely forgotten the log here. But the log doesn't go in any other part of this particular problem. So if we then use our log rules, we're going to have that this is equal to n times the log of 1, which is just 0. So that's going to disappear. Minus n times the log of the square root of 2 pi sigma squared minus 1 over 2 sigma squared times the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi minus mu all squared. Okay, so now we've got our log likelihood and it's all relatively simple. So we should be able to differentiate this log likelihood with respect to the particular parameters which we're trying to estimate and that should then define our maximum likelihood estimators for the parameters. I'll see you in the next video.